Hello everybody, it's Cobbler Bob, and today we've got not one, but two pairs of boots to review from Warfield and Grand. Okay, so let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of My five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cordon. Yeah, here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. And here they are, all finished up. Hey, we have an exciting package here. When you know it is shipped to Cobbler Bob, then we've got something exciting happening here. I'll show you guys what this is. Inside, oh, I knew this was from Warfield and Grand. This is a brand that I did review before. I've never personally worn their shoes, but I reviewed them. Uh, a friend of mine a couple years ago, I'll link the video below, um, wore them. And these socks are perfect because the color is gray and blue is the majority of my wardrobe. So, but there should be two pairs in here. Double unboxing. So we've got here, oh, these would be mine, Woodlands. It's a boot, 11 and a half wide, and eight and a half in the ballast. To show you. Oh, nice, very nice bag. Looks like a single larger bag. No logo, but still nice. And... Oh, wow. Oh, I can smell it. It's a little bit different from what I've had before. I'm not a big boot person, but I don't have boots. That's probably why I'm not a big boot person. Mm. See a little bit of broguing, cap toe. And I like this for a boot because it's not a heavy lug sole, but we do have uh, rubber on the sole. And by the way, my understanding is these are Blake stitched. So I'm going to talk more about that and why I'm reviewing these. And this is what's called pull-up leather. I'll explain that and show you here in a little bit. They look pretty nice. Trying to figure out the construction here a little bit. Get a shot of the uh, insole here. I thought it was stained at first or something, but it's hard to get a shot of that. Can you see that in there? It's camo. Isn't that cool? And I'm gonna go ahead and open up the second pair here. Uh, these obviously being an eight and a half, I cannot wear. Uh, these are for my office mate who already has a couple pair of Warfield and Grands. Um, we got a little bit different, but similar style. And again, this is the ballast. So the style number there is one, five, 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 six, seven. Mine's pull up leather, which is a little bit more of a rough tumble. Uh, I'm not as shiny. I'm not as dressy of a material. You can see the difference in style. No broguing. The color is definitely darker. The stitching is dark. So I'd say his are a little more formal. Um, but nice looking boot, isn't it? And again, Blake stitched. Those are Blake stitched. All right, Vero Cuyo, that's a Italian term. It means a genuine leather is what that means. So you know, it just has a real leather outsole. Not bad, huh? A little nick there, but it's a boot, you know. Very nice. Not bad looking. All right, guys, so this is my friend Danny Eamer, and uh, this is a pair of Warfield and Grand boots, actually two pairs. Um, and I'm going to tell you guys right up front, I like to be DOH, D for direct, O for open, H for honest. We were uh, given these shoes. Uh, I did not pay for them. So I'm going to try to be as fair, straight, and honest as, you can, as I can, but 
you know what? I'm probably going to be a little bit biased because of that. Is that a fair thing to say? Yeah. You know, but neither of us are really big boot people. So we were kind of talking about this, but as you can see from the, you know, the creases on them and the scuffs on them, I have worn these. Yours, if you want to hold them up there, yours look like they bring you out of the box, but how many times have you worn yours? I wear them at least once, uh, one to two times a week and for the past uh, two months. Okay. Okay. So you've, but so if we're talking two months, eight, nine weeks, so you've worn them 15, 20 times, probably at least. Yep. Okay. I don't know how you keep them so nice, <laughs> you know, um, but you said you're not a big boot person either though, right? Uh, actually, this is the first pair of boots that I've addressed uh, boots. I mean, I've had a pair of like Walmart boots, like cheap boots just from, mm -hmm. you know, the work in, but outside that, um, um, yeah. Okay. Well, let me go over what I see, see here in the construction. So, First of all, the price point we're talking about, these are $199, $200, $199, $99, I believe. You get them through their website, Warfield and, and Grand, Warfield Ampersand, that squiggly thing, Grand. Um, um, and I'll put it up how you spell the website here on the screen. The information that I have here, here's what I do know. They are made in China. The leather, this is called pull-up leather. So pull-up leather traditionally is a kind of leather that's a little waxier, a little oilier. It's a little less dressy but it usually is supposed to hold up to the elements a little better. You know, so with pull-up leather, sometimes you get a scuff on it and, you know, you could just kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, brush it, you know, buff it, brush it, and some of the oils will come back and fill that up a little bit. Um, so I didn't mirror shine them, but I did get a little bit of a shine on the toes. Now, one of the things that I was actually wrong on when I did the previous Warfield and Grand Shoe video a few years ago is, see, the welt here has... You can see the stitching around the welt. That's a cosmetic stitch. So, but when I realized that the cosmetic stitch was, it was not good your welt that I jumped on them, but I was wrong. These are actually Blake stitched. So in case you don't know, I'll link in the description below what the difference between Blake stitched and good your welt it is. These stitches are functional. So the mistake I made is I said, oh, the stitches are non-functional. No, these are decorative non-functional stitches, but these are functional. In other words, Blake stitches when the machine stitches the sole on and the stitching goes into the inside of the shoe, okay? So even though these stitches on the sole don't connect to these, these are a Blake stitched leather sole. And then it's also got the rubber you see there, right, um, on the heels. I really like this construction because to me, you know, we both work, you know, in an office environment, right? Now, we live in Northeast Ohio. I'm not an outdoor guy, but I like to hike. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, occasionally I do things that are, you know, a little bit outdoors. How about you? What's your lifestyle, would you say? Yeah, I like camping, uh, camp, you know, camping and just being in nature, hiking, all that. Yeah. Okay. And I think especially since the pandemic, like, um, you know, wearing a suit today, but I think since the pandemic, my dress has gotten more casual. I don't know about you. I wear yeah. jeans a lot more since the pandemic than I used to. So more casual in jeans, yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and where we're at in Northeast Ohio, you know, it's normal in the winter to have eight inches of snow on the ground outside and slush. And um, uh, um, I really like uh, um, uh, the dress boot concept. Right? I have one other pair of Johnson & Murphy dress boots. They don't fit the greatest. I haven't worn them that much. The other thing I don't like about my Johnson & Murphy dress boots is they're walnut, a light tan color. Um, and they just, the water just gets to them too much. You know, you, you see they darken and then, you know, the leather's just not appropriate. Uh, I like the darker color. Um, so I guess yourself, this kind of being your first dress boot, what did you think, you know? Um... Well, every time I wear them, I get a compliment from at least one person how much how much they like the boot. Um, for me, wearing uh, I'm not used to wearing something that's stiff and holding my ankles and everything in place. So it is a it is it does give you a lot of ankle support. And like I played basketball, you know, growing up, so I didn't even like high tops. You know, that's part of the reason why I'm not necessarily a big boot person. But I mean, during the winter in Northeast Ohio, being you know we're more doing more business casual and dressing. Uh, you know, I wear, I've been wearing these. Um, the shoe video he did on the Warfield and, and Grand uh, shoe was actually the shoes I bought, and he was yeah. uh, doing a review on them. And uh, but those, uh, they, they, I, geez, I bought those back in 2017, and they still are together and look great. And I still got compliments on those. There's, I have some monk straps, mm -hmm. uh, tan, and then I have uh, some black Oxfords, uh, similar design with a layered kind of like heel, how they have it here. And uh, I still, to this day, get compliments on those shoes, and they're, you know, I wear them a lot. <laughs> and as a frame of reference, you also own how many pairs of Allen Edmonds as well? I own uh, three pairs of Allen Edmonds, and sometimes I don't even get a compliment on my Allen Edmonds, but, like, for, that's why I was kind of, like, taken back by, like, what is it about just boots? 
Um, but I did get these ones because of this, the color. I don't have many of the, this color, but mm -hmm. you know. I would call mine a mid-brown, and I think yours is. Um, oh, like an amber. Um, or mahogany? I think mahogany yeah. I'm not sure if they're, what his official name for this color is, but that's interesting. That's very interesting that these get, you know, the more compliments. I was complimented a couple times on these. I like the fact that it, if your pant leg is covering them, it looks like a derby, a dress shoe. Yep. Uh, the sole is, I also like this sole because it's uh, rugged enough to be able to walk outside on, you know, mud or whatever, but it's sleek enough where, again, if you're in an office environment, it could, you know, cover up the top, it could pass for a dress shoe. Yep. You know, so um, as far as if we were to rate them as I have in my previous videos, right? How would you rate them? Uh, I guess the scale of stars, zero stars up to five stars, five being the best. On number one, aesthetics and looks. I'd say five on my end, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna give mine a four. I'd give them a solid four. Um, what I did think that they did a good job with on these, for example, is it like you can see the stitching around here is very nice and neat. Right, you know, have the uh, ends of the what do they call this? The piping is neat. Um, you know, you can see some double stitching here, it adds durability. You know, there's a little bit of broguing around the heel, broguing around the toe cap, and it's all done very nicely. Look how evenly, you know, uh, I mean, evenly the stitching is from the back. It's very well executed, you know, as far as those kind of things. So, I mean, I think I have to give them at least a four. Um, the only thing I'm, I gotta be careful not to put the thing in the wrong category. The way they wrinkle, you know, it's not the highest quality leather, but remember, we're talking about a, a, a boot. That's a lot of leather in a boot, you know, for 200 bucks. Like I looked them up, you know, like guys that work outside the work environment talking about Red Wing shoes, Red Wing boots. You know how much Red Wings are? Like yeah. non steel toe? They're like 320 to $350. You know, Allen yeah. Edmund boots are up there in that same, yep. you know, they're, they're more than the shoes, which are 450 So I don't think you're going to get them on sale for any less than three, 400 But, you know, so I'm going to give it a solid four for aesthetics and looks. Um, you know, finishing, I guess actually the leather, that quality would go in the next category, not in aesthetics looks. Finishing and detailing. Um, I'm going to give it a solid four again. Again, only thing I, you know, would have against it is just, you know, creasing a little bit more. Uh, but, well, I don't know. Yeah, actually, I mean, mine, are, mine are not very creased at all, and I wear them frequently. Maybe yeah, I'm just, I, I wear them, but maybe I'm sitting too frequently. I don't know, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> Another thing about the, the detailing that I do like is I like the speed hooks. I think that's pretty, you know, standard, you know, for all boots. But, um, um, you know, I like that. One interesting thing I noticed, um, again, I don't have a ton of boots, but they're difficult to get on and off is one thing I noticed. Yeah. I don't know if it's the the my ankle shape or the shape of the ankle but like it's through the throat here it, I have to unlace them fully and loosen each lace down to the bottom eyelet significantly you know in other words I can't just throw them on but what I've noticed is I don't avoid wearing them even though they're difficult to put on I will sit down open up the, uh, every lace and put them on even just to go to you know Walmart or something like that so yeah, what I, that tells me is I like them you know I'm attracted to them for some reason yeah I, I've noticed the same thing uh, I, I wore them on an appointment and uh, I was standing up trying to take off one boot when I was standing up and I fell over to the ground. <laughs> and, they, and, I, and, and then they just, I made it funny, you know, whatever. But I mean, they are snug. They fit very tight. Um, I got very narrow feet and ankles and stuff like that. So, I mean, these are a nice fit for me. But I mean, I didn't want a loose boot and then screw around getting, you know. So, I mean, right. you, you got to have a give and take a little bit of what you're looking for. But uh, I mean, yeah, as far as, far as I mean, I... You know, give probably the same score on that. Yeah. Okay. Number three, comfort and support. Uh, support. Uh, I feel. I mean, I'd probably say a solid four. Comfort. I mean, sometimes because we're still breaking them in. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first got my the 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 the, the other Warfield and Grands, uh, they weren't very comfortable at first because mm -hmm. you're obviously breaking in leather. Yeah. Um, but I mean. Uh, the more I wear them, obviously, the more comfortable I get, the more moisture they absorb and things like that. But as far as support-wise, I feel like I've got a lot of great ankle support um, yeah, in it. Mm -hmm. You know, so overall, I'm, you know, I think it's uh, been a great boot so far. Okay. And I'm going to give them, I, I, I think I'm going to give them a four on the uh, comfort and support. Um, I agree with supporting the ankle. That's why I don't think I don't mind having to open them up to get them on. I feel like they encapsulate my foot really well. Um, and like every other, you know, leather dress shoe or, you know, boot I've had, you do have to break them in. Um, it wasn't great, wasn't comfortable during the break-in period, but once you get through that, I'm a big fan of, 
you know, shoes that are made from real leather. Um, they are very comfortable. And this is interesting as well because you're, do you know what your Brannock size is? No. Uh, eight and a half. You're an eight and a half, something like that, right? But you're eight and a half narrow, like yep. super narrow or like, a, you remember what you got in Allen Evans? No. no? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know he's got a narrow foot, you know, so yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm pretty foot. wide. Um, and what size did you get? Eight and a half. Uh, just eight and a half standard? Yeah. Okay. And I think you got eight and a half because, are you eight and a half or nine? Well, the, the monk straps I got uh, were eight and a half, and then I told him the Oxfords I got were nine. So he said they fit more like the monk straps, so get them eight and a half. Okay, okay. But I'm normally a nine for okay. those shoes. Um, my Brannock size is, uh, these are 11 and a half wide, and I was so happy to hear they come in a wide. My Brannock size is eight and a half. My right foot's about a double E. My left foot's a little longer, and it's about an E. Um, and with this toe lock shape, which is normal for a boot, you see, it's pretty generous. It doesn't, it's not angular. It doesn't cut your foot off, you know? So uh, if I ever have a problem fitting, it's like my pinky toe. Uh, 11 and a half wide fits, fits me well, you know? Um, so I'm very happy with that. But one thing that I do find myself comparing these to my Allen Edmonds with is the cork bed, you know, on the Allen Edmonds. These, I don't think have a cork bed, but the Allen Edmonds, there is some indenting though, you know? They are taking some shape. You know, but um, like, for example, I would compare this sole construction to like my double oak, like my McNeil's that have a double layer sole. And they're not as comfortable as those. But again, you know, Allen Edmonds is a, you know, full retail price, $400 shoe. Their boots are even more than that. Right. So this is 200. So for what you get, I mean, it's not bad at all. They're pretty comfortable. Like I said, I find myself, you know, grabbing them and throwing them on and, yeah. you know, uh, I'm gravitating towards them. You know, they're definitely like, you know, the Pareto principle, 80, 20. They say you wear 20% of your wardrobe 80% of the time. Yep. You know, these fall on that. I wear these a lot more. I keep them downstairs rather than up in the bedroom because I got like 31 pairs of shoes and boots now or something. But construction durability. This area, I'm going to give them a solid four uh, as well. Um, I think the leather quality, again, if you we're looking at construction durability, not aesthetics, right? Um, when it's made in China, you don't know how long it's going to last, but you know, it's not corrected grain. These are corrected grain. They're not coated with a plastic, right? So I think it's going to be decently durable. Um, uh, so far, I mean, I've, you know, beat them up quite a bit. I like the fact that they're actually Blake stitched. I'm getting no lifting or separating of anything, you know, anything that's cemented together. And being that it's stitched, if it does, you could repair it. You know, the same thing, it's got a real heel stack. Uh, this this uh, um, a top lift could be replaced, you know, so there's nothing exotic or not, I shouldn't say exotic, you know, where you have like a plastic heel, you know, that can't be replaced. So I think it's got a, you know, for a Blake stitched shoe, I think this is going to be very durable. Um, um, you know, so I give it good numbers for that. How about you? I'd probably say the same. Okay. I mean, uh, I, I, like I said, uh, I maybe just need to break them in a little bit more, but I mean, as far as that goes, uh, you know, I still think it's a nice year's walk, you know? Yeah, yeah they look awesome. <laughs> I was one of those kids that uh, when I get a brand new pair of shoes, I wouldn't let anybody walk around me because I want them stepping on my <laughs> shoes. So I, I uh, got a, a new car here recently and, and just got the license plates in. Uh, and the guy goes, man, looks like that just, just look like you just took it off the lot. He's like, yeah, I take care of my stuff. So. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, and last one, cost and value. Um, this is where I think these these really shine. I'm going to give it a five on the cost slash value. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I've been thinking about this, what to say in this video, you know, um, they're pretty comfortable. They're not the most comfortable. Now, granted, I haven't tried tons of boots, you know, um, they're pretty good looking, but not like the best looking. They're, you know, pretty good construction, but not the best construction. The one thing, the overriding thought I kept having when I was, you know, wearing these out and about was if there was a, you know what the term um, SHTF means? If the crap were to hit the fan, mm -hmm. you know, like there's a crap were to hit the fan and I had to leave my house with only one pair of footwear on my foot. And that's all I could own. I might actually of all the pairs of shoes, I think I would take these. And let me explain why, because if I had to go to a business meeting and if the world fell apart, I don't know that there would be business meetings, but I could shine this up and it could pass as a dress shoe. You know, if I had to go hunting in the woods for food, this is going to keep my feet warm enough. You know what I'm saying? If I just want to be casual and I'm wearing jeans and a, and a sport coat, I can wear these to a rock concert. I could wear these yeah. to a business meeting, you know? You could even in Northeast Ohio, you could even get away wearing these with a suit. Yeah, so for the value, how nice they look, um, 
how, how they feel and you know, so a lot of the, you know, comments you'll get, I mean, for the value, the price, I'd say this is, you know, it's a great kind of compliment to any, anything you would have for the price. Maybe that's what I think for the price, for that price point. And again, depending when you're watching this video, who knows what's going to happen with inflation, you know, the cost may change, but for a couple hundred bucks, I think it's a really, really good value. So okay. I agree. Yeah. So I believe right now you can only buy these online. So let me give you one huge tip though. If you are buying these online, First of all, you need to know your Brannock size. Okay, what is Brannock? Brannock device is a shoe measuring thingy that you see at all the shoe stores. But have somebody that knows how to use it, right? Measure you. You know, and I would just be DOH, direct, open, honest. Go to a shoe store, you know, uh, and say, hey, listen, um, I'm not here to buy shoes, but I need to know my shoe size. You know, would you at least help me find out my shoe size? I mean, just, you know, right? Um, but you need to know not just your ball length, ball length is where the tip of your toe would fall. The space between the front of your foot, front of your toe and the front of the shoe is almost meaningless. So don't go by that, right? Everybody presses to see where your toe is, but you want to find out, and I'm going to put a link in the description below to a video that I did with an Allen Edmonds master fit. It's an hour long. Yes, there's a lot of detail, but if you really want to know, the most difficult thing about buying shoes today is a lot of them are online only. So how do you order a shoe without trying it on, right? But if you at least know your brand size, number one, not just your toe length, which is what everybody seems to know, and you kind of round that up to account for, you know, you never round that down. If you're not sure if you're 11 or 11 and a half, you go 11 and a half. The second thing is the width. Uh, then the width is going to be D is a standard width. Um, so you go D, when you go wider, E, double E, triple E is usually the widest everybody makes. Um, you go narrower from a standard D, this is in the U.S., you go down to C, B, A, I think there's double A, triple A, quadruple A. When you have quadruple A, your foot looks like a, you know, an arrow, okay? Um, so, so the second thing is your width, ball width. And then the third thing is your ball length. Ball length is how long your foot is from the back of the heel to the, the ball, actually right here. And you'll see on the Brannock device, it's got a little thing that you slide back and forth and the ball of your foot slides into that little niche, that little nook. That's the ball length. I have short toes, for example. My ball length is about 12 or 12 and a half. So it's more important that you get the widest part of your foot in the widest part of the shoe. Um, my impression is these shoes do run true to size. I don't think they run wide or narrow. Um, you know, and both of these shoes have a pretty uh, generous toe box. So I don't think you need a lot of impingement from, from those regards. Um, you can look more on the website for the sizing details, but if you're really still not sure, here's what I would do. Now, here's the thing though. Here's how you buy a shoe. It, 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 it's not as big of a deal if it has a rubber sole, but if it has a leather sole, number one thing is when you put the shoe or boot on, do not break the leather. What do I mean by break? Don't do that. See how the leather buckles? There's no need to do that, okay? Don't do that with the shoe, okay? Put it on, don't bend it. Pick your feet up like a robot, okay? You know, leave them on your foot for an hour, but just stay at home. So number one, don't break or bend the leather. And number two, do not wear them off of the carpeting, okay? Especially leather sole dress shoe. Do not even walk on linoleum or especially pavement, right? Because they're done. You need to return them in the exact same condition that they came out of the box in. You can have them on your foot, you know, for an hour. You don't have to walk very far. Does that make sense? So, so let me review the score that Danny gave his ballast. Uh, for aesthetics looks, he gave it five stars out of five. For fit and comfort, he gave it four stars out of five. For build quality, he gave it four. Uh, construction slash durability, he gave it four. And for cost slash value, he gave it five. For a total score of 4.4. For my woodlands, I gave it a score of four out of five on aesthetics slash looks, a score of four stars for fit and comfort, four for build quality, four for construction slash durability, and five for cost slash value for a total score of 4.2. Well, based on that, like I said, you know, these are definitely a keeper for me, you know, so. Agreed. Yeah. Some closing thoughts here. Now, I try to be DOH, direct, open, and honest in my dealings with people, especially my viewers here. Um, so a, a couple thoughts that I have is, number one, the way this all started was actually, as I kind of alluded to, I made an error in my previous Warfield and Grand review video that actually came out, and I believe it was 2017. 
Now, uh, the company owner was really nice in the way he brought it to my attention. And, you know, rather than coming down on me like a ton of bricks or something like that, you know, he's like, hey, your Warfield and Grand video is one of the top rated, or I think the top uh, YouTube video on my shoes. Would you change, you know, what you said in there because they're actually Blake stitched and you said that they were just, you know, glued on. Uh, and anyway, but my point is the way he uh, went through that whole conversation with me was very pleasant. It was, you, you know, uh, uh, the way you'd want a upstanding uh, business person of ethics to operate. Um, so when he gave me the chance to review a couple pairs of shoes and keep them for free, you know, I was elated. So I couldn't honestly say that, uh, you know, I'm completely unbiased. I probably am somewhat a little bit biased towards him, but I also want to let you know, I feel my scores and Danny's are fair. The fit and finish on these shoes are really good. You know, um, if you're a fan of my channel, you know, I have a lot of shoes. I have, you know, like 31, 32 pairs of shoes. Um, over the last few years, I've bought a bunch of Allen Edmonds and I'm telling you, the, the workmanship uh, of it is better. Whenever uh, in the past I've bought shoes that say made in India, made in China, I think the biggest thing I worried about was the materials. Now, we saw on both of these boots, right, uh, full grain leather, so we're not getting the cheap corrected grain leather, leather. and on the ballast it says Italian. Uh, it didn't say where the leather was sourced for the ballast, but I think the point is I don't think that is going to be as much of a problem. So the major thing that we have is, okay, what's done in China is the actual stitching, the construction, and the gluing. Well, you know, I'm, I can't obviously tell you that the gluing is done in an expert fashion and won't come apart, but, you know, I treated mine pretty harshly here in the Northeast Ohio winter weather, um, and I saw no problems, um, and you could see the fit and finish as I showed you the stitching and the distancing and the spacing from the edge and things like that. So, um, you know, um, I, I thought I was pretty fair with them, and they're just a, my personal opinion. You get a lot of boot for the money you're paying. I'm not saying they're the best, but for the price bracket he's in, I think he's got a winner here. So you may want to give him a shot. Go see warfieldandgrand.com. That's Warfield, A-N-D, Grand.com. I've got some links here below uh, in the description. Drop comments. See if you think I'm full of BS or, you know, um, and maybe if you have a pair, let me know what you think. All right, God bless you guys. You're going to see, as I said before, shoe content, and you're going to see automotive content. I've got another shoe video coming out. Next video coming out next week is a review of a pair of John Lobb shoes, so be ready for that. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that uh, thumbs up button if you liked this content. Go check out some of my playlists, um, and if you want to subscribe, feel free to do so. Thank you guys, and God bless. Thanks, Danny. You're welcome.